Dzień dobry, dzień dobry everybody, cześć, czołem, welcome back, privet, bonjour, czy... Wait, we had this, and how they... My dear comrades, towarzysze, and genossen, and of course... Genossen. Welcome back to... Call of Juarez Gunslinger, with me, Red Pulse Corp, we're here... Still in the saloon of Abilene, Kansas. Just to... well... Just to listen to our little friend of uh, Silas Greaves tell a story. Not a mansion. Last time we were up against Henry Plummer. And let's take a little look what we do today. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin. So that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. Was Hardin as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. Hell, he killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody. Not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. Be quick or be dead. Silas claims that he took a bounty hunt as a way to finance the pursuit of his remaining quarry. Roscoe Bob Bryant. I dodged death many a time. And that night Holy that shit! Well, this begins wonderfully. I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob and collecting the bounty on John Wesley. Oh shit! I hate you. Seriously? Did I just hit the fucking bump in your butt again? Texas Ranger got heart. Yeah. That's what they want you to believe. And I'm dead. As a stick. Wonderful! Well, this begins wonderfully. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. Witch's tit in a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres. Compadres, the very comrades. same saloon we're sitting in today. Hey, look look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me, and well. Wait, I'm jumping the gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? John Wesley Hardin was a killer. Early By the, the night. end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. And fathers and husbands. Family. Brothers and sons. Men with families who cared about them. He was a bona fide folk hero by then and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping Bob was among them. Shit, it's cold out here. Freezing my triplets off. 
Ain't right we gotta stay out here keeping watch like this. Ain't no bird stupid enough to go after Hardin anyway. Better three hours early than a minute too late. They didn't ask why I was there. They knew. As most of them were wanted as well. I figured Harden was here somewhere, but to get to him, I'd have to get past his gun. How the fuck am I keep now missing all of you? Done, as most of them were as foolish and full of bravado as I was. I had to spill a lot of blood to find out Harden wasn't in that camp. He was carousing in town with his closest friends. Arden's boys apparently didn't want me to reach the bull's head. Yeah, guess why? Shit. Execute new bull animals. He is just some naturals without even aiming. Hands both them and he's beyond. And that means behind you. Steady aim. Yeah, but I want this new fucking rifle. Let's recall more ammo. Some were hightailing it into town to inform their jefe of my unwelcomed presence. Let's take, first, take the secret, yes? Old Western, Old West Revolves. Next to the cowboy hat, the object most often associated with the Wild West is the percussion cap revolver invented by Samuel Cole. 1836. This revolver, along with a Winchester repeating rifle, was the preferred method for dealing death in the latter part of the 19th century. Okay. The first revolvers were front loading models. Black gunpowder was inserted into the chambers of the cylinder and then covered with lead bullet. Um, yeah, problem is with them, they often went. Well, if you shot them, and you didn't have grease on the end of them, they all ignited sometimes and you had a little explosion in your hand. Ain't that fun? Rammers were used to keep everything in place. All that was left was to place percussion caps on the opposite end of the cylinder. Because that, the early revolves were known as cap locks, with the cap and the ball inserted separately. The Colt Patterson and its later, later incarnations were examples of the design philosophy. This includes the Walker, the Dragoon, the 1851 Navy, while Bill Hickok used the Bear, the old, the model 1860 Army and others. The Remington model 1858 was unique because <laughs> was a unique design because it allowed for the replacement of the empty cylinders for loaded ones in the midst of fight. Later models used integrated cartridges as ammunition, eliminating the need to load each component separately. The Smith & Wesson Model 3 was such a design, one of its variants was known as the Schofield Revolver. That's a good, that's one of the best ones you can have in all the R2 by the way. And so were Colt's models, and so were Colt's most advanced products. Revolvers also involved from single action, where the cylinder had to be rotated by manually cocking the gun, and the so-called double action. The trigger mechanism would also cock the gun and turn the cylinder with single motion. One thing remained unchanged throughout the history of the Wild West. In the hands of skilled gunmen, revolvers were deadly weapons. You better hide. You what? That sucker! That stank! What the fuck? Yeah. From where? God damn it! Suckers. Yeah, I'm running, but I'm running towards ya. You little creep. From where? I'm getting fed up with this. Yeah, yeah. Mother goddamn sucker. I'm not hiding. 
You're hot. By the way, yeah. Stop that, so bitch. Let the boys know we got another low dog. A low dog. Why, oh why are you doing this? I to wondered me? if Bob was among them. Yeah, I wondered too. Seriously? Not up here? Wait, is there another? Oh yeah. Old West gambling. The Old West was populated with all sorts of adventurers. Fortune seekers, thieves, gamblers and gold diggers. Where there was gold, or in the absence of the noblest element, at least a dollar or two, there were opportunities to spend it. Neither corn whiskey nor saloon girls were free. Saloon owners, however, did offer a third form of entertainment, one that in theory at least offered the customer advance to actually make money, gambling. Poker, dice and faro, beloved by all, reigned supreme. Where gambling appeared, accusations of cheating usually followed. Let's face it, it was probably a common occurrence. The trick was to to do it without getting caught. Plan B was to do be so intimidating, no one would dare call you on your seemingly miraculous hand. Natural confidence alone wasn't enough, lightning reflexes and the ability to shoot straight was necessary as well. That's why many famous gamblers were also skilled gunslingers, celebrities of the West like Doc Hickok, Holiday, Wes Harden, and Wild Bill Hickok all fit that description description to a T. Why to a T? I don't know. There's a letter. There's a letter. Maybe we can see something up here. Well, at least there's a fucking nugget. John Wesley Harden. Harden, born on May 26th, 1853, was one of the West's most notorious killers. Next to Wild Bill Hickok, many considered him to be the fastest and, fastest and most accurate gunslinger who ever lived, or at least the deadliest, as he was believed as he is believed to have killed 41 men in various duels, shootouts, and other sundry incidents. One story has him shooting a man for snoring too loudly, but many believe that is simply a fanciful legend. Some considered him a cold-blooded killer, while others thought of him as a folk hero. He had a price on his head from the age of 15, but Harden allegedly only killed in self-defense or to defend his freedom. Finally arrested by the Texas Rangers, Harden spent many years in prison where he frequented the prison library and taught himself the law. He was sentenced to 25 years but released after only 17 and promptly passed the bar exam. The what? He tried to make a living as a lawyer but prov proved to be much, be a much better gambler. Harden could usually be found sitting in a saloon playing dice or cards. It is an irony that one of the most deadly gunfighters to ever lived met his end in the same way his idol, while big. Well, Bill Hickok did. Both were shot in the back of the head while gambling. Hickok was murdered by Jack McCall and Houghton by John Salmon on August 19th, 1895. Jack McCall? What the fuck? Well, let's get to it. Three of six, holy shit. Ah. Uh, Just go and I steeled myself for the fight ahead, for as good as I was, deep down I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Before I could test my mettle against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption. 
But John Wesley might have been a different story. Somebody kill him! Yeah, yeah, somebody kill me, somebody kill you, somebody kill all of us, don't they? Don't we? I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration. Let's give him a little... something to remember. Take the secret and Wild Bill Hickok, James Butler Hickok, also known as Wild Bill, is considered by some to be the most famous Western gunslinger of all time. Here in Germany, actually, I heard of Dog Holiday, and that's it. He is remembered as tall as a tall, slender man with long flowing hair and an omnipresent pair of holstered Colt 1851 Navy Cap and Ball revolvers. Born in Troy Grove, Illinois, in 1837, he worked as a stagecoach driver, fought for the Union Army during the war, and later became a scout, a lawman, an unlucky professional gambler, and a not very good actor, actor who dropped the balls with Buffalo Bill until he realized that the theater wasn't his true call. What he did best was put out laws, killers, honorary, Assholes and drunk cowboys in their brace by filling them full of land. The high noon showdown in the middle of the street, the staple of Hollywood westerns, was not a very com a common occurrence. As a matter of fact, they hardly ever happened. Unless, while well, Bill happened to be in town. If anyone was willing to stand in the street at high noon and face someone down, that would be William Butler Hickok. In 1876, Hickok was diagnosed by a guest. Doctor in Kansas City with trachoma and inflammation of the eye. He was losing his ability to see and his marksmanship and health were on the wane. As his finances were in trouble, he set out for Deadwood, South Dakota, where a recent gold strike had created a boomtown full of drunk miners, a perfect place for a professional gambler to play a straight. On August the 2nd of, the, of that year, while playing poker in another old ma and man's number 10 saloon, silly broke up. Billy broke a rule he'd been following for years, perhaps for the first time ever. He sat with his back to the door. A former buffalo hunter named Jack McCall entered the saloon at the very moment and drew his uh, revolver, shouting, Damn you! Take that! And shot Bill on the spot. The bullet went right through the gunslinger's head and hit another player at the table in the wrist. That just has it that at the moment of his death, while Bill Hickok was put holding a pair of aces and a pair of eights of the black. Since then, that name is com that hand is commonly referred to as the Dead Man's Hand. Okay. Heard of that. I'm just running away. Just a little joke. Uh, nope. I know the place. That's where the shotgun was. Wasn't it? More ammo. More rifle ammo. Shut it. You. I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. I read something. I'll be right back. Yeah, I found something. Climbing and dying. This is all my hobby. Yes. 
like I said, climbing and dying. Well, now I have to make this shootout again. I'll be right back. So, I took care of those guys. Let's just take a little look. Climb again. Like I said, climb and you're dying. Ah, motherfucker! Okay, this should actually go well now. What am I supposed to get up there? Uh. Oh, I hate everything. I hate everything! Well, looks like that jump was alright. Oh, god damn it. Well. At least I can show you how to get up there correctly. This video is getting too long. Definitely. Do I have to kill John Harden too? Or at least shoot him? Or have a duel with him? Ah, there we go. Cattle rustling. Before barbed wire was used to divide the free ranges at the Wild West, cattle rustling had thrived. Many famous outlaws of the time, like Bill the Kid, the Clantons, Curly Bill, and John Ringo, all tried their hand at stealing cattle. It was obviously considered a serious offense and punished accordingly. More often than not, a cattle thief never had a chance to appear in court because vigilante groups, uh, because of vigilante group, would usually lynch. The criminal on the spot, those unlucky desperados, hung his grim decoration dangling suddenly from the branches of roadside trees. It's not surprising considering the fact that cattle were the prime commodity of the West. It was often easier to get away with murder than the stealing cow. Yeah, you know you can't beat me. Well, fuck. Suffice it to life. say, nobody there was happy to see me. Bull's Head Saloon. When Phil Coe opened the Bull's Head in Abilene, Kansas, he enraged local townsfolk by painting a picture of Bull on the side of the saloon. This particular Bull had a large erect penis. It was on the good ship Venus, and my god, he should have seen us. The mast. Um, the figurehead was a whore in the bed, and the mast was up. Bulls had penis. Well, not. Nice. Law in Abilene at the time was none other than Wild Bill Hicker. He threatened a torch to the building if the obscene painting was not removed promptly. Before Co could make up his mind, Hickok paid a few men to paint over the bull and its offending private part. This infuriated Co and he confronted Wild Bill. Co clearly disliked Hickok and his animosity grew until one day Co fired two shots at the marshal and missed. Hickok returned fire, cutting Co down. He also accidentally killed his own deputy, Mike Williams, who was coming to his aid. Williams' death haunted Hickok until the very end of his life. Fuck. Good morning! Don't get what? Don't get what? Fact, I felt a certain hostility. Yeah, because guns are not hostile enough. Perseverance. Nice. You're done. Actually, I'm Silas. Nice to meet you. I was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived. 
As a moment later, I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. Oh shit. Hey look, cards! Hey look! First gun, 15! Kill the man for storm! Holy more for free! Hey look! It's John Wesley Harden! I felt a bolt of adrenaline. Or maybe that was fear. There's no big he difference was well sometimes. known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. Hey, look, Ramos is wanted. Why is Ramos wanted? <laughs> well, I'm dead. No, wait. He didn't hit me then. I'm sure of it. Why are you talking like that? That man was faster than Grease Lightning. Yeah. But being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. Actually, that should have hit him. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon, just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? What's with Ben? Took some time. Well, everybody, this time we got John Wesley Harden. This time he behind bars. I thank you, everybody, for being on the, with me on this wonderful path of gaming, and I wish you all good luck, good night, good luck, and never forget to. Wait, I've got. First, I've got some things for you. First of all, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Second of all, you know that I ask you all the time to keep on ripping? Yeah. Please put down below if you keep on ripping. And not just a little yes. Tell me, what do you keep on ripping? How do you keep on ripping? How do you enjoy this wonderful life of ours? So everybody, thank you. Again. And don't forget to keep on ripping. Thank you, goodbye, and good night.